Yay! Yay! Hey, let's do a quick example of something that pops up from time to time, and that's trying to compute the maximum range um, or the maximum of some function in physics. In this case, it'll be the range, which is something that we got last time. So we had that the range was v squared sine 2 theta over g. Um, so if I know the launch speed and the angle, I can tell you the range. Um, well, and the Earth's gravity, I guess. Uh, but also, one thing we might want to be interested in is what's the maximum range, right, for a, for a given velocity? How do you maximize, at what angle do you maximize the range? Um, and maybe the answer is obvious, but in a lot of physics problems, it turns out not to be. But but let's 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 take a look at it. Uh, the idea is that if you're launching something and you launch it straight, uh, let me draw a ground. There's the ground. So if you're launching something straight, the idea is um, it'll just fall down, right? Okay, so oop, if you launch something horizontally, um, it'll just fall straight down to the ground. Okay, how can you improve on that? That's, that's theta equals zero. How can you improve on that? Well, I could launch it up a little bit. We, we, I mean, everyone knows this. You, if you launch it up a little bit with some initial velocity, then it'll come back down, but a little bit farther, right? Because why? It spends more time in the air. Um, so if I keep increasing the angle, it'll keep on going a little bit farther for a given speed. But at some point, uh, just kind of run the movie in your head, at some point it's diminishing returns, right? Because if I launch it almost straight up in the air, well, then it's going to spend way, it's, most of that velocity will be y instead of x. It'll spend way too much time going vertically instead of horizontally, and then your range starts decreasing, right? So what is... What is the maximum range? So for some angle, uh, there's going to be a maximum range. How we do it, um, you probably already know. Uh, what we do is use calculus. And what we do in calculus is we take, uh, whoops, we take the derivative of the function as we vary uh, some parameter. In this case, we're going to vary theta. As we vary theta, how does r change? That's what we're really doing, right? That's what a derivative is. So how does r change when we vary theta, drd theta? Uh, so let's take the derivative. Well, drd theta, v squared over g, that's just, a, that's just a constant, v squared over g. And then I have the derivative of sine 2 theta. What is the derivative of sine 2 theta? Well, it's going to be cosine of 2 theta times the derivative of the thing inside, uh, which is like theta, which is 2. So this is just going to be 2 cosine 2 theta. And then what we do is, to see if it's a maximum, you set the derivative equal to zero. Remember how that works? Because if I have some crazy function uh, and I want to find a local maximum, here's the function. Where does the function top off? It tops off where its slope is zero, right? Where the function doesn't change much, uh, also called a stationary point. Where as I change the variable, in this case theta, the function itself doesn't change very much. That, that would be a maximum, right? We've reached the top of the hill. Or a minimum. Either way, because the derivative down here uh, is 0, 2. So you take the derivative and set it equal to 0. Um, okay, so now we just solve for theta. What theta makes that true? Uh, well, v squared over g, that goes away. Uh, the 2, it goes away. So really, I'm just trying to find out where cosine 2 theta equals 0. Well, that's not bad. Um, what theta uh, makes cosine 0? Uh, that's going to be like pi over 2, or 90 degrees, right? We'll work in degrees here. So if 2 theta is 90 degrees, then theta is 45 degrees. Okay, so, I mean, and maybe that's what you figured anyway, because um, that's sort of the midpoint, right? It kind of makes sense uh, that the maximum range is going to be where you launch at 45 degrees, kind of the midpoint. If I launch it straight up at 90 degrees, it doesn't go anywhere. So that kind of makes sense, 45 degrees. But it turns out that that really is the maximum range. Um, okay, so that means that my maximum range is just v squared over g times sine 2 theta. Well, sine of 90 is zero is uh, 1, right? So sine 2 theta is just going to be 1 for r max. So this is just going to be v squared over g. So if all you want to know is the max for a given launch speed, what's the maximum range that it'll go? 
um, well, this is it. That's going to be that's going to be pretty easy. We can answer some interesting questions this way, like, uh, what is the what is the slowest possible pitch in baseball that can get to home plate? How slow can you possibly throw the ball and it gets there? Well, what you're really saying, sort of implicit in there, is that you're going to launch it on the trajectory that carries it the farthest, right, for a given speed. So we want that R max. Uh, so the slowest pitch is going to be where we have R max, the maximum possible range for that speed. And then solving for V, this is just going to be RG, square root of RG. Uh, what is the distance to home plate? I don't know. It's something like 60 feet, 6 inches. I mean, that's like 20 meters. Not quite, but it's like that. So this is like... 20, let's approximate. Ooh, if I put that little squiggle in, it means I can do anything I want. So uh, it's about 20 meters, and then G is about 10. So this is going to be about square root of 200. And square root of 200 is like uh, 14, a little more than 14 meters per second. So something like 30 miles an hour, 31 miles an hour, uh, will get to home plate if you launch it uh, just right. Neat. Um, what if you want something to go one kilometer you want to launch a projectile one kilometer so that's going to be a thousand meters times 10 so that's a hundred meters per second right very quickly you can answer interesting questions if you want something to be able to be launched and cover a distance of one kilometer you better launch it with a speed of 100 meters per second um again no we're, we're discounting air resistance um, but it just shows that that if you increase your speed, you increase your range uh, pretty dramatically. Um, now, you can't throw anything 100 meters per second, but medieval slingers um, could get their slings to throw rocks uh, about 100 meters per second. So at least theoretically, they could cover a distance of about a kilometer, probably not really because of, of, of air resistance, but a really dense rock uh, could cover a, a great deal of distance. Um, in order to see what does a pitch that goes 30 miles an hour look like, uh, I don't think anyone has actually done it, but one of the slowest pitches of all time I've linked to in the description, um, and it wasn't quite 30 miles an hour, but it might have been like 40. It was one of the all-time uh, great baseball highlights. Um, so check that out if you get a chance. Uh, and then uh, next time we'll do a slightly different um, projectiles example.